the person is getting four quotes, but they're not actually comparing apples to apples. Whereas if they got four quotes that were all the same, they're probably just going to compare them all on price and they're going to go with the lowest possible price. Whereas if you've created a point of difference, now they, they perceive your option as a point of difference and they're a lot more likely to choose you because yours is different. Welcome to the Master Dealmaker's Secrets Podcast. And now, here's sales growth strategist, John Blake. G'day and welcome to Master Dealmaker's Secrets. I'm John Blake. This is episode 194. And today we're going to talk about the three most important questions that you need to ask when you are qualifying leads at the front end of your conversation. But before we do that, I want to tell you about a specific training that I've put aside just for you. It is over at johnblakeaudio.com. What you will find there is my exact strategy that I implement with clients to help them to double their sales with people that they've already spoken to. So these are people that have had a quote or a proposal given to them, but they haven't bought yet. So this is exactly how you can convert more of those people into paying clients. What you'll get are the exact word for word scripts, what to say on the phone when you call them and what to write in your emails when you are sending the follow-up emails, but most importantly, when to email and when to call over a 90-day period in a way that's professional, proactive, but won't piss them off. Um, it's over at johnblakeaudio.com. And what you will also get is the, so you'll get the, the actual audio. So it's a 15-minute audio that walks you through the entire strategy. And what you will also get is a PDF document that has all of the scripts, word for word scripts, exactly what to say on the phone, exactly what to say on your email and when to email and when to call over a 90 day period. Uh, johnblakeaudio.com, go grab it, put it into practice, let me know how it goes. Okay, so episode 194, we're going to talk about the three most important questions that you are to ask on the qualifying call. Now, firstly, I want to cover why would we want to do that? Why would we want to qualify better on at, at the front end of the conversation? Well, the answer to that is really simple. And the answer to that is if we talk to people who aren't qualified, one, we're going to waste time. So especially if you are like a service type based business and you're going to stick somebody in a car and send them out to someone's home where you're going to measure up and you're going to put a quote together. If they are not somebody that's been properly qualified, it it actually costs a lot to actually put a guy in a car and send them out to someone's home. And what you've got there is an opportunity cost because you could have sent that person to someone who was better qualified, who was more likely to buy than somebody who is less than qualified and is unlikely to buy. And so you waste the time at the front end, but you also waste the time at the back end because you waste the time following them up and they were probably not going to buy anyway. So one of the best ways that we can do that is that we can qualify up front. So one of the, so I'm going to give you three questions, three questions that you, that you should ask in that initial conversation. So this is someone who you have taken from, you know, perhaps an email inquiry where you've called them or perhaps it was an incoming inquiry. And, and the, you know, the, the favorite question that people ask when they ring up is they go, Oh, I want a quote for such and such. Right. So, and, and, and what the inexperienced companies do is that they'll say, Oh, yeah, the, yeah, it'll, it's going to cost this. Right. And in, w without having any context and context is, you know, what, you know, what is it that they were expecting? What sort of, you know, what sort of situation have they got? We haven't found anything out anything about their particular set of circumstances. Giving them a price might not actually be appropriate because there might be a better option for that particular person's set of circumstances. So there's, there's all sorts of reasons why it's important to qualify the person before we continue on with the conversation and potentially either give them a quote or send somebody out to measure up to you know, to to give them a quote or a, you know, put a proposal. If you've been listening to me, um, 
long enough, you will have heard that I actually don't recommend that you say quote or proposal um, and that I suggest that you either call them action plans or fee outlines. Um, primarily because the word proposal from a semantic perspective is something that isn't really it, it's sort of neither here nor there it's not really confirmed and if you and if you do the discovery part of the sales process properly the way that I recommend it by the time you actually do put pen to paper on a quote or a proposal or a fee outline as I suggest that people refer to them uh, you are actually simply confirming in writing what it what has been agreed upon uh, verbally. So what are the questions? So the first one is why us, right? Why us? So out of all the people that you could have contacted, why did you decide to call us? Now there could be that there's there's effectively two ends of the spectrum on, on this. At one end, you've got very commoditized, and I'll explain this in a minute. And, and on the other end, you've, you, you've actually got uniquely positioned, right? So if you, if you think of a continuum, on one end, you've got um, uniquely positioned, and on the other end, you've got really commoditized. Now, the, the, the response that tells you that you're in a really commoditized type uh, perception in terms of that particular person's perception of you, a response that would tell you that you fit into that category would be, oh, I did a Google search and you guys came up, right? That's really commoditized because what we, what we typically know about that type buyer is that they probably had three or four different browsers open and you were one of the people that they called, right? So that's really commoditized. Over, over the other end of the spectrum, you've got uniquely positioned. And uniquely positioned is I called you because my brother used you and he said you were amazing and he said that I'd be a fool if I spoke to anyone else, right? So that's why we ask the question, why us? It gives, it, it helps us to understand as to whether we, we actually have a point of difference in the person's mind or if we're really, really commoditized. A lot of people who listen to the podcast want to know what we do over at Master Dealmaker Secrets. And effectively what we do is we work with sales professionals and business owners all over the world who are seeing massive increases in their top line sales revenue. So we help business owners and sales professionals to effectively focus on the three key drivers to growing sales revenue in your business. The first one is controlling the message that you send out into the marketplace so that potential clients see and hear and read what you do as an opportunity as opposed to your competitors. The second thing that we do is we help you to create a direct path to the 20% of your ideal clients that will deliver 80% of the revenue. So everyone knows the 80-20 rule. We help you to de develop a direct path to the 20% of the people that are gonna give you 80% of your sales revenue in your business. And the third thing that we, that we allow you to do that we create a process for is for you to be able to double the amount of leads that you get that convert into paying clients. So if this is of interest, we do have an application only process to become involved in, in this particular program. And to, to get to there, all you need to do is, is to go to www.johnblakescall.com. So it's J-O-H-N-B-L-A-K-E-S-C-A-L-L.com. And there's a couple of questions to answer there. And then what you'll do is, is get on a, a quick conversation with me and I can find out a little bit more about what you've got going on in your business and see potentially whether what you are doing would be a fit for what we could help you with. And at that point, I can extend an invitation if it's a fit and uh, you can make the choice to come on board or not. So uh, that, that's the opportunity. That would be the next step if you're looking at how you can take things to the next level. If you're enjoying what you're hearing on the podcast, if you're getting value from it, uh, I invite you to do that and uh, I will look forward to talking to you. The website is www.johnblakescall.com. Talk to you soon. Why now? So the reason that we ask this is that if the person's not thinking about doing anything until next year, why would we send somebody out to, to you know, measure up or why would we invest the time with them now uh, because we would be wasting our time? You know, we're going to be sitting on on this uh, this this opportunity for a long time before it actually comes to 
fruition. Now, there are some situations like in a, you know, like if, if you're dealing with a, I have a lot of service based type businesses. If you're dealing with a strata and commercial type company, sometimes those, those sales cycles are huge. You know, they can be, you know, they can be months and months, if not years. Uh, before they come to fruition. So there are obviously exceptions to the rule, but if you're dealing with something, you know, if you're dealing with something that has a relatively shorter sales cycle, uh, finding out timing is really, really important. So, you know, why now? So it gives you, it, actually, the answer to that question reveals a lot. The first one, it gives you urgency. It's like, oh, well, we need to get it done before Christmas, right? Oh, okay, great. So there's, there's, there's a level of urgency. Or it could be, you know, if, oh, you know, we, we need to get this, you know, we need to get this renovation done. Uh, you know, before the baby arrives or before our parents arrive from London or, you know, so you can see that there's some urgency there. So when there's some urgency, that that would make that person more qualified and us more likely to send somebody out or spend the time with them to work out what it is that they want. And it also gives you, yeah, so it does two things. So it gives you urgency and it gives you the reason why. Which, which are uh, uh, so timing and reason why, which, which, which both allude to the level of urgency. Obviously, the, the, uh, the more urgent it is, the more qualified the person is. And the third question is why in this manner? And the reason that I suggest that you ask this question is because people, consumers, are not professional buyers of our particular product or service. And so my, my favorite example of this is I have a client that has a plastic, he's a plastic surgeon and he has a Google campaign and he generates a lot of leads and there is actually quite high, high demand for what he does. And on his website, he has these animations of the different type procedures that he does. And I, Want, I challenged his thinking on why he would have the animations of the different procedures that he does. And in, in, within that conversation, I said to him, so out of every 10 people that you speak to, how many, because most, you know, 80% of people do like, you know, research as to, you know, what it is that, that they're going to buy, right? And I said to him, out of every 10 people that you speak to, how many people think that they need procedure A when really they need something very different to that? And he said seven out of 10. So this loops back to that question. So why in this manner? You know, so what, you know, why do you want to do it this way? So if we can challenge existing assumptions, there's an opportunity for us to develop a point of difference because most companies uh, will say, oh, you know, I, I want to get this. And if you say to them, okay, well, can you tell me, you know, why, you know, why is it that you've decided that this is the best course of action? And once you get the person to explain why they came to this conclusion as to why it was that they needed this particular option or this particular product, what you'll start to understand, especially if you know your stuff, is you'll start to to notice gaps in their assumptions and gaps in their knowledge. And this is your opportunity to create a point of difference because in most cases, if people ring up um, three or four different companies and say, oh, you know, can you give me a, um, you know, can you give me a quote on a X, most of the companies will just say, yeah, sure, right? So... Um, so I, I'll give you an example that comes to mind. So one of my clients is a um, is a plumber, and they do a lot of hot water systems. Right. So someone rings up and says, oh, "I want to get a quote on a I want to get a quote on a gas hot water system, an instant you know gas hot water system." So most people, or most most plumbers, if you ring up, they'll say, "Yeah, sure, it's you know it's going to be this, or yeah, it's it's going to cost you this, and we'll get somebody out to to do a measuring quote." Right. So if you were to say, oh, so I'm curious, you know, why is it that you're thinking of getting gas? Oh, because that's what we've got right now. Okay. And how long have you had that one? Oh, it was here when we bought the house. Okay, great. Um, do, you have, uh, do you have solar panels on your roof? Yes. Okay. Are you aware that if you get a heat pump, you can 
actually get free hot water and not have to worry about gas because the the panels on the roof will heat the hot water system. No, I had no idea. Okay, so now what have we done? We've created a point of difference and we've created some value, right? So they spoke to like, you know, four different companies. The first three, oh, can I have a, a quote on a gas hot water system? And they were like, yeah, gas hot water system would be this much, including, you know, plus labor, right? Number four says, oh, do you have solar panels on your roof? Yes, we do. Oh, are you aware that if we install a heat pump, you can actually get, you, you can actually heat your hot water for free using your solar panels? No, I had no idea. So now the person is getting four quotes, but they're not actually comparing apples to apples. Whereas if they got four quotes that were all the same, they're probably just going to compare them all on price and they're going to go with the lowest possible price. Whereas if you've created a point of difference, now they, they, they perceive your option as a point of difference and they're a lot more likely to choose you because yours is different. So I hope that, uh, I hope that example makes sense. Uh, as usual, thank you very much for listening. Um, I have something really exciting coming. I've, I am just about to launch my 10-week Sales Mastery Certification Training, and I will have more on that soon. I am really excited because it's the first time that I will have been able to offer the same training that has created massive, massive shifts in sales revenue with my private clients to, uh, to sales uh, smaller businesses and sales professionals. So keep an eye out for that. That's going to be coming out in the coming weeks. As usual, thank you very much for listening and I will talk to you on the next podcast. Cheers. You've been listening to Master Dealmaker Secrets with John Blake. Subscribe to get more in-depth strategies and maximize your sales process with new episodes every other week. And double your inquiry to sale conversion with the lead flow you already have. Go to johnblakeaudio.com for his exclusive, free, no-fluff audio training and companion PDF guide.